This is the science of stupid. Warning! What you're about to see is certainly stupid, potentially dangerous, and at times probably painful. Please don't try any of it at home. Yes! This is the show where aptitude bashes heads with absurdity. As our trusty team of testers explore key scientific principles so you don't have to. With their adept assistance, we'll study the science behind hydrodynamics, visual fields, and airfoils in the battle between science and stupidity there can only be one winner. So, prepare to be schooled. It's the science of stupid. In this show, we'll explore <laughs> vertical momentum, parabolic trajectory, <laughs> and radius of curvature. But first this. Rivers are hugely powerful. When the Amazon is in full flood, it releases an average of 12 million cubic feet of water into the sea every second. That is hard to imagine, I know, so let me put it this way. That's a lot of water. Even smaller rivers can have a lot of power. Oh my God, I just don't know about that water. That is crazy, thank you Lord that I got off of it. But some people use that power for fun. Maybe not him anymore, but, but some people. And even the calmer stretches of water needn't be dull. We all understand that water takes the path of least resistance. Rivers convert gravitational energy into kinetic energy to accelerate water downhill, but there's a lot more to it than that. For example, did you know that, broadly speaking, a river can be split into three sections? In its upper reaches, the river is narrow, and some of its energy will be used for vertical erosion of the riverbed. This leads to a turbulent flow and vortices in the water as rapids develop. In its middle reaches, the river, having been fed by tributaries, has a higher discharge. This contributes to horizontal erosion of the riverbed, forming meanders on flatter ground. On its lower reaches, the river has lost a lot of its original energy and flows more slowly in wide riverbeds along flat ground towards the sea. So how the river behaves depends on, amongst other things, what section of the river you're in. But when heavy rains come, any part of a river can swell and become dangerous taking anything in its way downstream. The Johnson Homestead just got taken by the mountainous river. As luck would have it, the Johnsons had moved out a couple of years ago. This middle section river has plenty of energy for horizontal erosion of its riverbank, especially during floods. Erosion of the ground beneath the cabin leaves it unsupported, and it too is washed away with drag. This is the upper reaches of a river, where the rapids can rage. Great for kayaking, but you do need to be careful. Especially if your kayak is a little, well, flimsy. The river is in its upper course, so it's very turbulent, as it has a lot of energy for vertical erosion, creating steep-sided valleys and sharp drops. One of which rips this canoe in two. And it's very hard to negotiate vortices with only half a boat. This is the middle reaches of a river. It's wider and has a lot more volume, having been fed by tributaries. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That flow rate can be a little much. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Especially if you only have little itty bitty paws. Looks like someone needs a bear hug. Here the river looks deep, straight and reasonably slow. The perfect place for a bit of diving. <laughs> yeah, but just not like that, because you look daft. 